It's David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE3303 solids. We're going to talk about axial force diagrams and torsion force diagrams. I think the two tie together nicely. The hardest thing about these things is establishing a sign convention. And I think that I hope this example, these two examples together will help it be clear in your mind. The difference between, the main thing I'm trying to emphasize here is the difference between external forces and internal forces. Internal forces resist external forces. So let's start off talking about the axial force diagrams. I have, this was a homework problem. I have a bar with collars where I can apply additional axial force to two, three and a half kip force in this point to 1.75 kip forces there and then a 1.5 kip force at the other end. Sum all those, I see that that's in equilibrium. Some of the forces in the x direction zero. So let's talk about sign convention for axial force. Um, for the internal force of axial forces. I want to say that positive is tension because tension causes, it's a stretching, it causes an elongation, so let's call that positive. It causes the length to increase positively. Compression, just the opposite, causes it to get shortened, shorter, so let's call that negative as far as axial force goes. I then cut free body diagrams at the three sections in between where my external forces are applied free body diagram one, I've got this two kip force at the end and I've got my internal force FA at the other end. I want to assume it in tension and then let the sign tell me whether or not I'm correct it's in tension or the sign's negative then I'm really in compression. Okay I want to sum forces in the x direction. For this calculation I want to assume positive is to the right but this is only for the free body diagram. This has nothing to do. It's coincidental that positive to the right corresponds to positive because it's causing tension of my internal force assumption. Anyway, sum of force to x direction, positive to the right is equal to zero. It's negative two because that's to the left plus FA in the way I've assumed it in tension of the internal force. So, rearrange that, I get FA is equal to positive 2, so that means it is in tension. I move over here to section 2, got a free body, external forces, internal force assumption, positive tension, because it's causing it to stretch and elongate. Same sort of sum of forces in the X direction equation with positive to the right. Sum of forces in the x is zero, negative two, it's to the left, two times plus two times three point five, because it's positive to the right according to this sign assumption, plus FA, which I've assumed is tension, which is also positive to the right according to this sign assumption. Rearranging that, doing the math, I get FA is equal to negative five kips. The negative means that my assumption of tension was wrong, so I've really got five kips of compression at section two between those two collars. Look at free body diagram three. I can continue cutting my section and looking at the part to the, uh, to the left, but it's going to be easier, fewer numbers to deal with to cut the section and look at the part to the right of the section cut. So I have my once again, in this case, because I've cut my section to the right, and I still want to assume a axial force unknown as positive causing tension or stretching of the member. And then I have my externally applied force of 1.5 kips. I've still got the same, I'm just kind of a right is positive for X kind of guy. So the sum of forces in the x direction is zero. Positive is to the right. Neither one of these forces, so it's negative FA because it's to the left, minus 1.5 because it's to the left. Rearrange, I see that FA is equal to negative 1.5 kips. 
the negative means it's in compression. So you can see by looking at this, obviously, the arrow should point to the right to offset this external force of 1.5 kips, so it's trying to compress. So it's further confirmation. Then I just graph it. Plus 2, minus 5, minus 1.5. And uh, so that's pretty straightforward. Now let's talk about torsion. Now this is another homework problem where I have a shaft with four wheels or gears on them with different torques or torsions applied. 15, 30, 75, and 30. These three are in the same direction, kind of coming around from the bottom, coming at me from the bottom. This 75 is coming at me over the top. And so I can see that this shaft is in equilibrium also. 15 plus 30 plus 30 minus 75 is zero. So the sign convention is a little bit harder to understand for torsion, but we can do it with the right hand rule. Remember, we're talking about internal torsion, the torsion internally that resists the external torsion. I want to use the right hand rule and cut a section. I'm going to cut a section one, two, and three. Then I put my, the heel of my hand, that's this part right here, on the cut surface with my right thumb pointing away from the cut. So if this is the shaft, and say I'm cutting section one, so I've got the wheel over here, and then I've got the cut that I make right there. I put the heel of my hand right there. My thumb's pointing away from the cut. My fingers curl in the direction of positive torsion. So that's going to be over the top at me from over the top, this direction. So now I do a free body diagram at one. I see the, the wheel or the gear at the left end with 15 kilonewton meters coming under at me and I have my assumed positive torsion here then I do a sum of moments equation in which case I assume counterclockwise is positive so if I'm looking at the end of the shaft this right here positive moment for me for this calculation happens to be the same as my internal positive torsion but anyway so it's that's positive moment or that's what I'm going to assume for this equation zero negative 15 because it's curling under it's the opposite of that direction plus T1 over the top because it's positive internal torsion so T1 rearranging becomes 15 positive 15 kilonewton meters continuing on I cut section 2 I have the same, now I have an extra point of ex application of external torsion, this 30, from the second wheel. Everything's still the same, my sign assumptions are still the same. I get negative 15 minus 30 plus T2, my assumed internal positive torsion. I get 2T, T2 is equal to positive 45 kilonewton meters over the top, resisting those those forces are those torsions are trying to turn it like that so this one has to resist it by trying to turn it back that other direction to keep it in equilibrium so finally I'm gonna look two ways at section three I can do it the hard way which is consider all these these three wheels to the left of my cut and in this case, uh, 15 coming under, 30 coming under, 75 coming over the top, plus my internal force, internal torsion coming over the top. Right hand rule, do a sum of moments equation. At 3, it's negative 15, it's under 30, negative, it's under positive 75, it's over the top. And my internal force is assumed over the top. So do the math algebraically, rearrange, I get T3 is equal to negative 30 kilonewton meters. So I'm assuming that this is positive from right hand rule. So really the internal torque, torsion is going to be the other direction, which makes sense because the bigger one is the 75 and I've got to resist that. 
the, the net that's greater it's going to be a I'm going to have to resist that as the uh, dominant force okay I can look at this I can make my cut and I can look at the section to the right kind of like I did up here on the axial force diagram so now my directions are going to be different just looking at this wheel on the left end on the right end I've got 30 kilonewton meters coming under trying to rotate it like that then I put my right hand rule heel on the cut surface which is now on the left end of the shaft my thumb points away from the cut and my fingers curl in the direction of positive torque which is over the top away from me then I do a sum of moments equation still I assume counterclockwise is positive if I'm looking at the whole thing so it's like that some of that moments is equal to zero it's negative T3 because it's trying to rotate it clockwise and this applied external moment at 30 kilonewton meters is also trying to rotate this thing clockwise so it's negative T3 minus 30 rearranging T3 becomes negative 30 kilonewton meters so doesn't matter which end I'm looking at I still get negative 30 kilonewton meters I plot those right here, positive 15, positive 45, negative 30.